going on, wrestling fans? It is I, Steve Fall, and welcome to Tank Out right here on Wrestling News Co. On today's edition, I am talking to my favorite member of LWO. Don't tell Ray that. <laughs> it's Elena Vega. How are you doing today? <laughs> I'm great. I love the intro. That's awesome. That's <laughs> I, well, don't tell Ray, okay? We're, we're I, good. I mean, there's a few things I won't tell Ray. Or, or should I say, like, remind him of, like, the time I slapped him on the ladder. He's very forgiving, that Ray Mysterio, you know, so. <laughs> well, <laughs> he'll, he'll well, well. Uh, I, I hope, I hope, because the man is a legend. But, you know, we're going to get to some hard-hitting questions here today. Very difficult stuff. The first question we need everyone to know the answer to. Who are the Syrup Twins? Oh, my God. <laughs> uh, <laughs> you caught me off guard with that one. That oh, was I know good. You did. Oh, man, what's it going to be? But um, the Syrup Twins are my two new kittens, Pancake and Waffles. So, uh, yeah, they're both uh, little Persians. They're about nine weeks old. And they are the cutest little bundles of fluff. They just look like marshmallows with legs. Like, that's it. Like, they're just, and, and not even, maybe little dust bunnies with legs. Because they're just, like, little, like, this big, like, tiny, tiny. I actually put them next to a um, tube of toothpaste so people can see how small they actually are. And they're about that size. Wow. Like, a tube of toothpaste or remote control, about the same size. My God. Now, I have been on your Twitter account many different times, and... It seems that you have something going on with your cats. Now, there's <laughs> auditions. There is some sort of project going on. Can you elaborate more? Because I absolutely <laughs> love movies where the, the dog and cat's mouths don't move, but you yeah. can hear voices. And I'm like, man, they had a budget, but they didn't have a big enough budget to get those mouths <laughs> to move. But you, yeah. what's going on? Well, so it was honestly, it started off as kind of a joke and it was <laughs> something that I was just playing around with on Twitch and, you know, me and my Twitch chat were talking and I'm like, it'd be so funny. Like, you know, somebody says, oh, your cat's in a TV show. They're so funny because Blue was doing something. He was playing with like something in the room and he was fighting one of the other cats. And, you know, he's just a comedian, that one. He He's very smart, though. He can open doors. He can open cabinets like. He doesn't have thumbs, but he doesn't need them because he just he can figure it out. Right. So they're like, oh, they need their own show. And I'm like, yeah, maybe they do. <laughs> and then I was like, you know, OK, well, what if what if we did then? Like, you know, would you guys want to voice them? And they're like, yeah. So it's like, all right, like, screw it. Like, whatever. Like, I'll, I'll do it. So I uh, I just tweeted. Uh, I'm holding auditions for people who want to voice my cats. And then it took off completely. Like, I didn't think it was going to jump off that hard. But like, um, I had one of my moderators, Tim, he wrote up a script, like he helped me write a script. And like, he added their pictures and like a little description of them and people auditioned. I even had professional voice actors asking me if they can play my cats. I was like, Y'all know it's not backed by anything, right? Like, it's just me playing around, like, whatever. And like, no, 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 we think this could be something really big. So yeah, it's crazy how that evolved, but yes. Wow. Well, I cannot yeah. wait to see that because I hope it's a Chris <laughs> I hope it's like a Christmas special, Hanukkah special, some sort because I'm a <laughs> sucker for anything related to a holiday involving animals. So it, you know, all those dog shows and movies, you know, Air Bud deserves an Oscar, but that's a different <laughs> argument altogether. I'm not gonna start that argument here. We could, yeah. but I won't. Yeah. Um, <laughs> that's amazing though. And you know, go back a few years ago, it seemed like we weren't going to see you anymore because this Twitch disagreement happened, but luckily <laughs> everything got settled and here you are in today's world still on Twitch. Now, what about Twitch is it yeah. that makes you feel, I don't know, maybe comfortable, more like yourself? Because it seems like you and Twitch are best friends. <laughs> I'd say we are because um, I would say it was something that I was so reluctant to do for the longest time. Like, Soraya was trying so hard to get me into it. She was like, you'd be perfect for it. You play video games anyway. You won't stop talking about this video game and this Pokemon. She's like, you might as well just like do it on Twitch and like have other like-minded people, you know, to talk to and play with and whatever. And I was like, nah, like I just like my space and I like to just play my games alone and play with Tommy and just, you know, whatever. And uh, she's like, I'm telling you, you're going to like it. If you get past the setup part, you're going to love it. And then after suffering through that, um, mm -hmm. She was right. And she usually is because she knows me so well, but she usually is. And I ended up falling in love with it, especially once I figured out um, that there are crazy people like me in the world who may have nine cats, nine now, besides Natty, obviously. Um, but yeah, that have nine cats and love to play video games and, and are such 90s babies that it's, it's such a nice thing. Because sometimes when I talk to people about 
oh, do you remember all that? Or Kenan and Kel? Or do you remember the Sailor Moon episode when this happened? Or this Pokemon, blah, blah, blah. And they're like, yeah, cool story, bro. Grow up. So now oh, no. on Twitch, I meet other like-minded people. So it's it's it started there. And then it just grew into this massive thing that, um, I don't know, I think because people saw the, and I'm so big on being authentic. If you are authentic, people are going to recognize that. Mm. So you can't just stick anybody in my position with a kitty, you know, headset and say, oh, guys, blah, blah, blah about this episode and have no idea what they're talking about. Because you'll see right through that. And I think that was one of the major things that I told WB initially. It was like, hey, I didn't know that this was going to blow up as much as it did. But I feel like there's a an audience that we're missing here, especially because everything's going digital now, like this is where the kids are, you know, and like, this is where we're going to get them. And I feel like there's a way to to blend the world. And I think once they kind of figured out what I meant by that, and I think that's what really what was missing was the communication there. And once we talked it out and we kind of figured out, hey, like, this is how we can work together. That's why I'm back. That's why I'm back on Twitch. That's why everything kind of worked out. And it's crazy how a conversation can change a lot of things. So um, I just find it funny that it literally it it took so much, but now it's become something crazy. Like me and Xavier Woods just presented an award at the Streamies. You know, it's like, hey, she goes from 2020 that was kind of really hard time to now. It's it's crazy to see how it's evolved. That's amazing. Uh, you stole one of my questions about your streaming awards. So we'll uh, <laughs> we'll I'll write that. She stole a question. I don't like Lena Vega anymore. Ray Mysterio, yeah. number one. Uh, <laughs> that's amazing, though. I love that you brought up uh, some conversations about like all that and Keenan and Kel because I was recently having a conversation with someone about guts. Like, do, 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 do you have it? Guts. And some people in the room were like, what is that? And other people were like, yeah, I remember it. And we got in this big, heavy conversation where arguments and fists were thrown. No, they weren't. Um, about the people on Guts, were they actors or were they kids on vacation with their families plucked from just walking the uh, you know Universal Studios? And I was like, I've never heard of the theory that these children were actors. So I kind of lost my mind because when you watch all these shows, you think you can do all these off-school courses, climb up yeah. the aggro crag, things like that, and then suddenly – People were like, no, those are actors. I'm like, I, I, I want to slap you for saying that. So yeah, I don't, I don't know. I don't think they are. Especially Thank you. Because I was one of those kids, not on Guts, um, but I was one of those kids that went to Florida. I went to Universal and I, I got slimed. Like we were doing, my second <sighs> and I were doing a, um, some kind of like obstacle course thing that they had for us. And it involved like uh, the wild thornberries where he was wearing like the chimpanzee hat and stuff. Oh. And I was supposed to be Eliza. And we failed. So then we got slimed. And I'm like, this is like amazing. Like it wasn't televised, but it was something that they had for, for people that come in and, and they just do that. And I guess maybe from there, they might pluck some people and do it. But I know that firsthand, the slime is disgusting. And it was just like, oh, wow, this is really what it's like. And you you go through all of that stuff. So I remember very, very like clearly as a kid going to to do that and wanting to come back and do it. I don't even know if they do it anymore, but my God, back then it was something that you like looked forward to. And I didn't, I don't know, I guess in my mind, anything was, was possible as a kid. So I was like, yeah, we're going to go to Nickelodeon and we're going to do this. And it's going to get on TV like, duh. No. Oh man. <laughs> I always wanted to be on double dare with my family, but it, on those shows, it always felt like, you know, no offense to moms out there. I, I love my wife and I love my mom as well, but I felt like always the mom was the one who got stuck on double dare, trying to put her fingers up the nose and get the flag and they yeah. never could. I'm like, I'm like yeah. mom. <laughs> yeah. lost us a trip to some space camp oh <laughs> god yeah. mom. no god. it's true it's crazy though like my see but my mom is a little like she's way more competitive than me which i thought was pretty impossible but she's way more competitive so she i feel like would be the perfect person to have because even if we lost she's beating us up she don't care about that she beat us <laughs> right? it'd be our fault somehow oh no well oh. Let, let's move on before we get pissed off all the moms um <laughs> WWE SmackDown is coming to Boston this Friday, September 8th at TD Garden. I'm pumped. You're pumped. We're all pumped. I'll be there live enjoying the festivities. But what can fans expect when they attend a WWE live event? Well, whenever you go to a WWE live event, like, you think that you know what's going to happen. You can expect the pyro. You can expect like some matches. But you don't really know until you get there because there's always something that happens that people aren't expecting. And I think that's the cool thing is like, Expect the unexpected is what I always say about WWE events. And 
when it comes to me, when it comes to the LWO, like we're always going to go, we're always going to show out. So whether that is in the ring, whether it's backstage, whether I'm accompanying my guys, whether they're accompanying me, like it's going to be a party and we're, we're excited to do it. So, and it's always really cool going back to TD Garden because I feel like the audience there is so passionate and they're so like, they're ready for it each time. So I'm excited to do it. Oh man, I'm excited for another project you got going on. Is it true that you and Dakota <laughs> Kai are going to have a podcast? Yes. Yeah. Actually, we started filming right here. Mm -hmm. uh, this is actually part of like what it's going to look like, like what, you know, where we're sitting. But um, we've already filmed a few episodes and it's going to air pretty soon. We're just um, going through the final stages of like the editing because I'm such a perfectionist when it comes to stuff like that. Um, and I have a friend of mine, Josiah. I think you you know who Josiah is. He's done like a lot of the NXT shows and stuff like that. Um, so he's a genius and he's working on our, our stuff right now. So we're really, really excited. And of course, like we get to add the the blending of the worlds for her and I, because as similar we are, we're very different in some cool ways where I'm a little bit more with the cyberpunk style and she has a little bit more of the like sweet kawaii kind of like, you know, style. So we blend the worlds and then we add my cats and it's just, it's fun. Oh man. <laughs> and because I... we get the gamer talk. Like that's, that's really the biggest thing is like the gamer talk that we have. I like how you're like, we have this, we have this, plus cats, e <laughs> equal great show. Yeah, it's perfect. It's like the perfect combination. It's like, it's like making the Powerpuff Girls, but just in uh, me and Dakota. So it's, it's, it's going to be fun. And I think, again, it's it, when it comes down to being authentic and gamers, I wanted, I was like, who in the locker room is going to be my perfect opposite? Like, who knows gaming just like I do and it's mm. definitely there. you know I can get into other conversations with people but like when it gets down to like the real stuff and knowing it's usually just everybody from up up down down and Dakota so it's it was like a perfect perfect choice for me and and we've actually had some conversations recently we we're talking about guts but we had some conversations recently that I'm like oh I can't wait to see what everybody else thinks about this because even just one off the top of my head we had a conversation about if one of them had to go Nickelodeon or Cartoon Network, which one would you pick? And then what, based what, on but like what year you're talking about though, that's what, you know, just for, in general, forever, forever. Um, I would, uh, <laughs> I would eliminate, you know, I don't know. Cause I watch adult swim and I enjoy that, but I also have so much nostalgia towards Nickelodeon in the nineties. Yep. Oh God. You get, exactly. That's a, that's a conundrum. <laughs> Yeah. And that was, it was tough for me because, and, and for her, because you both like anime, well, I like anime a lot more, but Toonami was also a part of yep. like Cartoon Network. So I'm like, oh, I didn't really know where to take it. But then all of the cool games that stemmed off of those franchises, like, oh, okay. So it we kind of broke into that conversation and I would love to see where other, and that's the cool thing. We're going to be like engaging with the audience and seeing how like what they say, bringing their questions in and, you know, making it fun because it's, it's way more fun for us when it's interactive. Of course. Uh, you know, now you get me all thinking about like Legend of the Hidden Temple, you know, all these shows that would disappear if you made me choose <laughs> to eliminate and snap my fingers and make them disappear. Yeah. I, I don't like this. I've, I don't I like know. this question. I, I, I feel my feelings and my childhood feelings are <laughs> being crushed <laughs> by my adult yeah. feelings. From there, it's like, okay, well then, say you did choose one and, and then the, the very next level for me, I, I did it in levels. I was like, okay, Cartoon Network versus Nickelodeon, you pick one. Okay, now that you have that one, what are you gonna choose between PlayStation and Xbox? And then you're gonna go from there. And like, the, you know what I mean? So there's so many things that we get into that it's like, oh, I don't know. Some people are gonna get mad at some of my answers, I'm sure, but. <laughs> well, it's the internet. And uh, no matter what you say, I, I like soup, I like salad. Why do you hate salad so much? I, well. <laughs> I didn't say that. I also like soup. No, you hated soup. What? I don't know what you're talking about. Uh, either yeah. way, though, oh, yeah. either way, I cannot wait for that because, yeah, again, there's so much happening with you. But also in the <laughs> WWE, it feels like Raw and SmackDown wrestlers are visiting their past, going back to NXT and having some great matches with talent like Carmelo Hayes and so on and so forth. Is there a chance maybe you would like to go visit NXT once again with LWO, maybe have some interactions? And who would you like to take on? Because it seems that the ratings for NXT are going up every week. And I'm not mm -hmm. sure if it's the characters developing so well on the, uh, the programs or it's bringing in SmackDown and Raw stars. Like, what do you attribute ratings to? But also, would you like to take a little visit? 
Uh, I think it's definitely smart that they've started to blend the worlds of, especially if they want to keep it as a third brand, you know, it's, it's it, always fun when you get to mix things up. Like you can go to Raw expecting to see Judgment Day, for instance, but then, you know, when you go to SmackDown, you'll see LWO, you know, and then now when you go to NXT, but when you blend the worlds, it's like, oh, cool. I get to see this person mixed up with this person. I, I wouldn't expect this matchup. So I think that's what makes it fun for people and they can expect something different. Um so it's it's for sure going to be something that uh, even recently now with, you know, what's going to happen with Becky Lynch and Tiffany Stratton. Yeah. Who knows? You know, there's there's so many things that you're like, damn, I wasn't expecting that. I wasn't expecting that mix up. And like, who's going to win there? And um, so, yeah, I mean, I think it's definitely something that's cool. But as far as me going and mixing up with anybody, I'm just whew, that's a tough question. I don't know. There's so many people that i'm just like hmm i think wow that's a, that's a, that's one that stumped me i think for sure because <laughs> like i i think what would be interesting though is um I, I love jakara and i love everything that they're doing right now so it might be cool to mix it up kind of with them and know them and, and see where it goes there i mean getting to see Ava rain obviously and her group and striving there is so cool for me to see especially because i've known her since oh my gosh she's practically a baby so it's it's cool to see kind of where that development's gone, but I don't know. There's there's so many people that you can like try and mix it up with, you know, like even um B Priestley. Like I'd love to get in the ring with her. I mean, she's amazing. So it's uh yeah, there's and, and that's the other thing, is like it's good that it's hard for me to choose because of the level of talent that's there. Right. You know? Agreed. So I think that that's always gonna be interesting for sure. Um, one final question before we wrap up. Unfortunately, recently it, we we lost Terry Funk, we lost Bray Wyatt, and um, such a sad day for in general for wrestling fans in the world in general. But you know, my uncle Howdy mask is right here, and you know, I don't want to talk about um, you know sad times. Do you have a fun Bray Wyatt story we can end the show with? Because I know he affected so many of our lives. I never knew him personally. I saw him ten feet away at a press conference, but you mm -hmm. obviously interact with him face to face. Do you have any fun Bray Wyatt stories before we wrap this up? You know, I feel like the cool thing about listening to everybody's stories about Bray is that there was always a common thread in everybody's story. And it was always his smile, his laugh. And like, he had the best hugs. He always had like these big bear hugs that you would just like look forward to, you know? And I'm, I'm so like, I don't want to say I'm a very um, affectionate person necessarily, but I just, you look forward to those Bray hugs because you just knew that they were filled with so much, like, there there was no bad bone in his body. Like, it was just so, it was met with such love and just, you know, he was always looking to help people. Like, even if they weren't in WWE, even if they weren't, like, you know, if they're trying, you know, like, we were also passionate about just wrestling and being in WWE and growing as characters and growing as people. And, you know, he's no, I mean, my God, I tried out for WWE back in, this was FCW 2010. <laughs> and when I met him, I remember him like, you know, obviously when you're, when you're getting there and people are just seeing you walking around, they're like, oh, okay, there's another human, whatever. But when they see you in the ring and they see you trying, or they see you, you know, cutting a promo right away, it was like, I had him on my side and I was like, wow, that's so cool. Like to have him actually backing me, was just such a cool feeling. And just hearing all of the just advice that I would get from him was really cool. But I, and I tweeted this too, but probably the coolest thing for me is, is seeing how much he cared as a person to person level. Like he knew how badly I wanted to be in WB. I had been trying since 2010. I didn't get there to 2017. And you know, when I came in for tryouts, like uh, one of the scariest things to do as an extra is to have a tryout match before SmackDown started. So every week we'd have that because I was traveling with them as Rosebud, um, just trying to like, hopefully one time they'd be like, you know what, let's just throw it in there. Like I just was hoping to get like, you know, a second look and I had a match. And I remember at that point, if you got the attention of the boys of like the boys meaning like everybody like in the locker room people surrounding the ring because people are off talking about their matches they're talking to the producers whatever but the second I got in there I remember Bray turning around and seeing me and started watching and he's kind of there and he's watching I see him at the corner of my eyes watching and he gets so into it that he started a Thea chant like he started like cheering for me like during the match and it was like right as I was like hitting my comeback and like he was getting everybody else involved and everybody at that point 
was cheering for me. And then they started clapping after the match was done. And he led that, like he led that whole thing. And then I see him walk up to uh, who was in charge of TR at the time um, at Talent Relations. And he said, she should be with us. That girl right there, she's been working her ass off. Like she deserves to be with us. And I was like, whoa, like Bray Wyatt just said that. Like that is the coolest freaking thing ever. And yes, it did take me some some years after that, but just knowing that he was one of the people backing me, that he was one of the people supporting me, like that was just such a cool thing for me. Cause I'm like, he didn't have to do that. Like he could have just continued going about his day and you know, planning his match and whatever it is that he was doing. But he took that time to help me get better, help me be seen for what he saw me as. So I, I have nothing but like, good warm memories of him and just thinking about how and one of the things he I also said was obviously one of the things he used to say was uh you know he has the whole world in his hands right but we saw the person that may have had the whole world in his hands but all he wanted to do was give it to his kids and his wife and that's I think was the most beautiful thing about him he was such a, a great family man so I love actually it's funny is um that was one of the few times when my husband saw uh, Bray with his kids that he was like, I think I want a kid now. <laughs> <laughs> so it's, uh, yeah, I remember that being one of the first times that he ever said that. So that was uh, because of Bray. So wow. yeah, he's uh, he'll always be so loved in, in our locker room and the fans and just everybody that's it's, it, I think that one was probably one of the hardest days I've ever had at work ever like I could not keep it together at all even like before the match I was a, I was a wreck like before the match of EO I was a wreck after the match I was a wreck but it was like you felt like you were doing it for him and for some reason during that match I felt like people say this like it's so cliche right but like I felt him there I felt like his supportive kind of presence there so it just I think we'll always kind of have that no matter what well, thank you so much for sharing that story about Bray Wyatt because, you know, we only see what we see on TV, but you got to talk to him face to face. And obviously he was a big supporter of you. And uh, I can imagine him joining the LWO. I could see it. I could <laughs> I could see it coming, folks. But, uh, you know, as many things in life, we must wrap this interview up now. But obviously your voice is part of Street Fighter 6. You have a wrestling school with your husband. There is so much more we could talk about, but apparently I'm getting the hook. So we got to <laughs> wrap it up, folks. But I just want to say it has been an honor and a privilege to talk to you today. I know we mentioned off camera, we talked for like four minutes at Money in the Bank London. And it's like, hey, how are you doing? Huh? What's your favorite color? <laughs> favorite movie? Da, 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 da. And you don't really get anything in. And this, yeah. I feel like we got to have a conversation. We got to share some stories about your cats, about <laughs> Dakota Kai. So much is happening in the world for you right now. And so everything for you, I think, is going up in the world of professional wrestling and, of course, streaming. So maybe someday you'll get your own streaming award. I see it happening in the future <laughs> right over there but i have to say it's been an honor and a privilege talking to you zelina vega from lwo i'm pumped you're a pump we're all pumped for smackdown this coming week on friday night let's get that championship gold around lwo and get a ple in mexico please thank you very much i'd love that i love that along with returning to puerto rico i would absolutely love that i know we talk more but i gotta go but thank you so much for being here <laughs> on tank out i've been seafall she's lena vega have a great day and we'll see you next time Bye bye. Thank <laughs> you.